Whew. <clears throat> good evening. Good morning. Good afternoon. Yeah, okay, one of those days. Good afternoon. Good evening. Good morning, class. All right. <clears throat> I'm going to read, and then I'm going to do a presentation. That way these can load while I'm doing the presentation. The presentation can load while I'm sleeping, because it's going to drag a little bit. Okay. Stormy weather, part one. With all the building we've been doing, we're going to need more 12-penny nails before long, Robert said as he drove another home into the milking stanchion he and John were building in the workshop. John nodded his head. Reckon it would be a good idea to inventory the consumable supplies to get a feel for what we're running short on. Might have to explore alternatives. Never much tried it before, but I suppose if we had to, we could probably assemble the stanchion using wood pegs like they used to do in the olden days. Considering what nails and screws are likely going to cost when we go to buy them, it might not be a bad idea to at least get a feel for how con such construction works, he chuckled. At least we've got power, so we won't be having to make the holes for the pegs using a brace in a bit. I never could make a clean hole with one of those things. When I was Mel's age, that was all your granddaddy had, John's father said. No power saws either. Your great uncle Obadiah made his living as a carpenter, and he did some very good work using just hand tools. Nowadays, only the rich could afford a carp would be able to afford a carpenter like that. Hmm. Robert went outside to cut more wood for the stanchion, leaving John inside making measurements. On the shelf over the drill press, the radio was on, tuned to a local talk and news station in Tallahassee today. <clears throat> The controversial streamlined justice bill quickly passed out of the House Senate Conference Committee after several late-night meetings were held to iron out differences between the two bills. Complete details will be available as soon as the full text of the bill can be reviewed. On the national scene, Senator Clinton's dollar devaluation bill has cleared its first committee hurdle, with three more remaining before it makes its way to the Senate floor. The House counterpart to the bill has not yet been introduced. In California, there have been repeated calls in the state legislature to set up a California state bank that will issue its own currency backed, as, backed by, as yet, unnamed assets in order to allow the state economy to begin more fully functioning. The states of Washington, Oregon, and Idaho have expressed interest in developing the idea into a regional bank of issue. Unconfirmed reports indicate that representatives of the Bank of Japan and the Bank of China have attended the bank hearings in the California capital in Sacramento. Treasury Secretary Rubin soundly denounced the idea as ill-conceived and in contravention of U.S. law. <laughs> Bullshit. Pardon my comment. Internationally un... Internationally. Unrest continues today in the Uruguayan capital of Montevideo, on the second day of a government-ordered bank holiday, the temporary bank closings were ordered by the central government in an attempt to cut losses and restore investor confidence, which have been devastating the national economy. Many of the problems besetting this small South American nation are spillovers from the free-falling Argentine economy and the steadily sickening Brazilian economy. Mm hmm. The flattening of the import-export trade resulting from the asteroid strike and the coastal devastation resulting from the impact tsunami are blamed for the worsening state of economic health of these Latin American nations. Breaking news is arriving about yet another contact between New Mexico National Guard troops and a large band of Mexican BS raiders. Details are sketchy at this time as to the precise location of the battle but preliminary reports state that 14 Viest bandits were killed and three National Guard soldiers. In a press briefing yesterday, President Bush once again appealed to Mexican President Vincente Fox to better patrol the Mexican side of the border to prevent further raids. The president stated that if the border cross-border raids did not soon come to an end, he would have no choice but to authorize military operations on the Mexican side of the border to quell the problems of lawlessness and banditry now taking place in the region. In other words, it made. <clears throat> Robert came back into the shop with the new wood. 
John looked at his dad and grinned. Shades of blackjack Pershing. I've got a Springfield rifle. Just need to scare up a campaign hat and some putties, and I'd be ready to go. I wonder if the folks along the border down there are organizing the way we have. With radio communications, those bandits might just find themselves warmly greeted the next time they come to town. In the Middle East today, a new leader in the United Arab Emirates has come forward by the name of Sheikh Al-Hassan bin Saladin. Little is known about Sheikh Saladin, but according to Al Jazeera television, he shares the ideology of the radical Sunni Muslim Salafia sects that preaches the expulsion of Westerners and end to corruption and a return to Quranic law. This creed is said to be very similar to that of Prince Sultan, now head of the neighboring Royal House of Saudi Arabia. In fact, the Saudi royal government announced today that it was sending representatives to the UAE capital of Abu Dhabi in order to formally recognize the new government. Further news from Saudi Arabia announces the arrest of Prince Al-Walid bin Talal on charges of moral degeneracy and corruption. The prince is one of the largest individual Saudi investors in U.S. assets and was a major part of the pro-Western bloc of the Saudi royal family. No word from the prince has been heard since his arrest. <laughs> Imagine that. The two men nailed the last boards into place. With construction completed, they broke out a can of paint and put on a first coat. John said, as cool as it is tonight, this paint won't be dry before morning. We'll have to finish it up tomorrow. It's nearly supper time, so why don't we call it a night? His father agreed, and with that they cleaned their brushes and headed to the house. Inside they found Lisa and Heather putting supper on the table. Anne, Melinda, Brittany came in from the greenhouse where they'd been filling seed flats. They all sat to the table, but John noticed Luke was missing and inquired as to his whereabouts. Sally Starling called a little while ago. Her daughter Judy has some sort of fast-spreading red rash. Lisa said it sounded like an allergic reaction. So Luke said he'd come over and take a look at it, since the clinic won't be open before Monday. Said he wanted to talk to Rick anyway, so he might as well go. John grinned at her and asked, he's not going to buy Rick's pigs too, is he? Lisa laughed, no, I think he'd be completely at sea with pigs. At least cows he knows a little something about. The family said grace and began their meal. John noticed that Lisa and Heather spoke very little to each other through the meal, and there seemed to be some tension between the mother and daughter. Since neither brought up the matter, he did not inquire. Supper passed quiet, quietly, and when it was finished, Heather began to gather the dishes. Anne asked, do you two need some help with cleanup, or can we finish with the seed flats? Actually, Lisa replied, if it's not inconvenient, I'd like to talk to you, girl to girl like. Anne said, okay, it's warmer in here anyway. Britt, you want to work on your schoolwork? John asked, Whose turn is it to milk the cow this evening? Melinda well, replied, It's mine, Daddy. Miss Ellie and Aunt Lisa gave us all lessons this morning, and I've got first go at her tonight. Well, I'm going to give you a break this evening, which maybe you can use to work on your schoolwork with Brittany. I'm itching to see if I can remember how to milk a cow myself, so I'll do the milking tonight, he grinned. I may need Aunt Lisa to come and give me lessons, too. It's been more than 30 years since I've milked a cow. John stood and filled a small pail with hot, soapy water, gathered up the milk pail, put on his hat and coat, and went out to the barn. The females began to gather up the supper dishes, and Robert went to his room. In the barn, John carefully washed Dandelion's bag and dried her with a clean cloth. He situated himself on the low stool that he'd cut down for the work and tried to recall the necessary technique. His back was stiff, and he grunted to himself. This will be a damn sight easier when we get that stand and stanchion in here. No wonder young girls always do this kind of work. They're more limber. Ain't that the truth? <laughs>